week one of the 2021 NFL season has officially ended, and there are so many things we've learned from this past week. So I figured it'd be a good idea to compile the biggest winners and losers of week one of the NFL season. And of course, these opinions are subject to change. I remember last year, one of my biggest losers was huh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trading for Rob Gronkowski in addition to Tom Brady. And that aged just horrifically. So before we get to the content, just take a moment to sack the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing and turning on our notifications. On this channel, we bring you daily NFL news and analysis. And of course, check us out on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Now that we get all that out of the way, break. So a few weeks ago, I was in Italy, and if you guys followed me on Instagram, you may have seen my adventures in Italy. And when I was there, I don't mean to get too personal with this, but here we go. There was this one night where I was sitting with a bunch of friends eating dinner, and I stood up and I locked eyes with a chick. And this girl was giving me the look, you know, like the please come talk to me look. So I got up, went to the restroom, came back, started talking to the woman, and she was beautiful. Um, as I was talking to the girl, I was like, wow, this woman is like super attractive, super hot, but my interest wasn't there. It was really, really strange. And eventually what happened is this girl would tag along with the crew throughout the entire night, but ultimately I did nothing about it despite her being really interested in me and me thinking that she was really attractive. So that led me to ask myself some questions in regards to my testosterone. You see, I'm very into weightlifting, so I understand testosterone's role in building muscle and that's why a lot of bodybuilders juice themselves. They're trying to inject exogenous testosterone in them so they could build more muscle. But in this case, I was more concerned about my lack of desire, my lack of libido. After all, I'm just 28 years old, you know what I mean? So it's very strange for a guy to be going through this. So that's why I'm partnering with Hone Health. They sent me this testing assessment so I could go ahead and self-test myself, send in my results to a lab, and they could see if I'm doing okay. I'm gonna give you guys an update as to how that's all going on my Instagram page because we don't really talk about this type of stuff on this channel and I don't really have a story time channel. But I'm hoping to get a little bit more energy as a result of this making sure my libido is straight and hey maybe i could build a little bit more muscle if they need to help me out in this department so if you want order hones easy at home testosterone assessment test so you could test your testosterone levels and for a little bit of time only viewers would get the at home testing and consultation for just 45 dollars when they use my promo code microphone or just go to honehealth.com or just go to honehealth.com forward slash microphone to take advantage of this opportunity now and thank you hone health for the sponsorship and for the help mike Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? So I'm really excited to get to our first winner because this is a guy that was taking so many L's during the NFL preseason that, well, just we were all rooting for to some degree or another. And the first guy is Jamar Chase. You see, Jamar Chase has been coming under heavy scrutiny because apparently he forgot how to catch footballs during NFL preseason. This was a huge storyline, way bigger than it should have been. I even made two videos and a short on it. And I'm really happy to see that the man really showed up right when it mattered the most. Apparently, he just needed Joe Burrow to throw him the football because this man went off in week one. How many rookie wide receivers do you know that have the ability to go off for five receptions over 100 yards well 101 yards to be exact and a touchdown in their debut in the nfl not very many especially considering that they went up against a pretty decent defense i mean the minnesota vikings defense isn't what it used to be but they're not absolutely horrific and it makes it all the more impressive so huge shout out to jamar chase but he's not the only part of this winning category because every single rookie wide receiver that was hyped up during the pre draft process from Jamar Chase to Jalen Waddle and even Devontae Smith had a pretty good week one. If you look at Devontae Smith, a player that I was personally very concerned about, mainly because of his frame and the system that he's going into, the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm sorry, no offense, but Nick Sirianni didn't really do a lot to at least get my confidence in him. He wasn't really the greatest in press conferences and Jalen Hurts didn't really have the best season last year. If you look at his statistics, it's kind of scary to be depending on a guy that's fumbling his words in a press conference and a man that just didn't look like a legitimate NFL QB to actually 
actually carry the Eagles this year. But again, I was wrong. Devontae Smith went off six catches for 71 yards, and the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Atlanta Falcons. Now, of course, it's the Atlanta Falcons, but it's a good start because the Philadelphia Eagles are the leaders of the NFC East. But that's before we get to Jalen Waddell. And of course, Jalen Waddell didn't have nearly as good of a game as Jamar Chase did, but he did have a fairly substantial game, having four catches for 61 yards and a touchdown as the Miami Dolphins beat the New England Patriots. All three wide receivers look like absolute studs. I don't think there's a Henry Ruggs or a John Ross of this NFL draft. Sorry, Las Vegas Raiders. And we got to tip our hat off to the rookie wide receivers. Now, unfortunately, the losers that are going to compliment the winners here are the first two picks of the NFL draft, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. Now, I don't remember the last time a rookie quarterback came into the league and was extremely hyped up and absolutely dominated in his debut. As a matter of fact, I think of Andrew Luck and Cam Newton and even Peyton Manning. And typically, rookie Rookie QBs, even if they are extremely hyped up, don't tend to do well. And of course, it's kind of scary considering how Trevor Lawrence got to go up against the porous Houston Texans defense that is literally trading away every good player that they have just for draft capital that is clearly rebuilding that doesn't even have their star QB playing this season. But Trevor Lawrence went 28 of 51 for 332 yards and three touchdowns. That's pretty decent. The bad part is he had three interceptions, which is to be expected if you're a rookie QB. Now, of course, Trevor Trevor Lawrence has another thing going against him, and that's the fact that he has a rookie head coach as well. It's going to be interesting to see how he develops this season because Trevor Lawrence doesn't typically lose a lot, and he's going to start his NFL career with an L against a pretty, at least in my opinion, on paper, a team that we expected to be getting at least a top three or top five pick in the NFL draft this year. Now, Zach Wilson is kind of in the same boat here, but he went up against the Carolina Panthers, which in my book are significantly better than the Houston Texans. Zach Wilson completed 20 of his 37 passes for 258 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. But the scary part of this was Wilson was sacked six times and the Panthers beat the New York Jets 19 to 14. Adding salt to the wound is the fact that Zach Wilson went up against the former Jets QB Sam Darnold. And there was kind of a storyline how Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson returned to New York and absolutely destroyed the Jets. And it's clear that the reason why they weren't successful, apparently after one week of play, was because the New York Jets had a fairly incompetent front office. So the jury's out on that. I'm going to come out with a dedicated video on that. Be on the lookout for whether or not the New York Jets made a mistake. But again, it's just week one. I'm sure Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence will be fine. But you got to tip your hat off to another winner, and that is Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold has had a really tough NFL career thus far. And despite my alma mater being UCLA and me always poking fun at the fact that USC quarterbacks tend to flop in the NFL, save for Carson Palmer, who had a decent NFL career. I just couldn't help but feel like Sam Darnold was being set up for failure. I didn't think he was a bad QB. I didn't think he was anything near what Mitchell Trubisky was. And I think he was just set up to fail from the start. You're talking about a head coach, Adam Gase, that literally ran halfback dives with Frank Gore to a nauseating extent. His best wide receiver during his time there was Robbie Anderson. And of course, he never had a fully reliable offensive line. It's no wonder why this man saw ghosts when he faced off against the New England Patriots, but I digress. I'm really excited that Sam Darnold's in a situation where he has a head coach that believes in him and is clearly the right head coach for the Carolina Panthers and Matt Rule. He has remarkable weapons in DJ Moore. Robbie Anderson is coming back over there. And of course, he has Christian McCaffrey, which is a phenomenal weapon to lean on to get make sure that you are always in rhythm. Now, Sam Darnold didn't have the flashiest statistics, 279 passing yards, one passing TD, and one rushing TD, but he did eke out a win against his former team, and for that, he is a huge winner this week. Another winner would actually have to be the Houston Texans because, well, I actually thought the Texans would be absolutely terrible this year, and I don't know if it's David Culley, I don't know if it's Tyrod Taylor being better than we give him credit for, I don't know if it's the fact that Brandon Cooks was a 1,000-yard receiver last year and we all seem to forget, I don't know if it's the fact that their three-headed rushing monster of David Johnson, Mark Ingram, and Philip Lindsay might actually be pretty freaking good, or if it's the fact that the Jacksonville Jaguars were just really that bad. But I want to give credit where credit's due. The Houston Texans did look decent in their first game, and at least at the very, very least, if they do have a bad season, they won't be one of the worst teams in NFL history because they at least won 
one game. But unfortunately, a huge loser in this situation is Deshaun Watson because we really don't know what's happening with this man at this point. Of course, we've made videos in the past about his case and I don't want to get into it because I don't want this video to get demonetized like my last video got demonetized just for mentioning his civil issues. But in addition to that, the Houston Texans don't seem that motivated to trade for him. They come out and they give out this price tag of three first round draft picks. They get offered three first round draft picks and then they reject it. Then eventually they come out and they say, hey, we want three first round draft picks and three players or picks on top of that. They get offered that as well and they reject it. So it's really difficult to see what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. It seems like he's not going to play all season long, which is a shame considering how he gave us one of the best years of his career last year. Hopefully the things that are going on in his personal life get solved. Hopefully they're not bad and we get to a situation where he could return to an NFL field. But for now, Deshaun Watson is a huge loser considering that this is his situation, but at least he's getting paid to do nothing. Now, the next winner we have to mention is, of course, the entire freaking NFC West. I mean, from the Arizona Cardinals to the Seattle Seahawks to the Los Angeles Rams and eh, I guess kind of the San Francisco 49ers. They did look dominant in the beginning against the Detroit Lions until they ultimately almost choked that game against the Detroit Lions. They all looked fairly impressive, especially the Arizona Cardinals and the LA Rams. Caught my eye the most. Let's start with the Cardinals, shall we? Chandler Jones comes out and says that he is very disgruntled with his contract and he actually requests a trade from the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals don't grant him his wish, but the year prior, Chandler Jones didn't really look like Chandler Jones. He only played five games. He only eked out one sack. And this is after a year where he looked pretty freaking dominant. Well, he decided to look dominant once again in week one, notching an absurd five sacks against a three-time Pro Bowl left tackle in Taylor Lewan. And I think a huge part of this has to do with the fact that J.J. Watt is on the opposing edge rushing with him. So that's not going to be a lot of fun for opposing defenses. And I think the construction of this roster is remarkable. You have some good veterans in that roster in J.J. Watt and A.J. Green. But on top of that, you also have a stud quarterback in Kyler Murray, a very underrated rushing duo of James Conner and Chase Edmonds. And hey, maybe this Cliff Kingsbury guy knows what he's doing after all. It's a very big make or break season for the Arizona Cardinals. And if Cliff Kingsbury could make them a dominant power in the NFC West, well, not only can he expect to keep his job, but this could potentially be one of the most fun teams to watch on a consistent basis, maybe on the caliber and the level of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I know that sounds a little extreme, but hey, I had a lot of fun watching the Arizona Cardinals take down a pretty freaking good team in the Tennessee Titans. How about you guys? Now, we can't forget about Matthew Stafford, and I think Matthew Stafford might be the biggest winner this week. After rotting away in Detroit for the entirety of his career, a player that I honestly ignored for the most of his career because, well, he always would put up great statistics in the regular season, didn't really have a lot of postseason success, or no, he didn't have any postseason success at all. And typically after, of course, a few years where he had Calvin Johnson and he was able to connect with him, he finally unites with a head coach that clearly knows what he's doing in Sean McVay. And I knew from the moment that the Los Angeles Rams traded for Matthew Stafford that this marriage was going to work. Sean McVay just seems like a head coach that knows what he's doing. I think his brain and his knowledge for football and his knowledge for play design and game planning is almost Bill Belichick-esque, although Bill Belichick has significantly more years on Sean McVay. So I do think in a duel, typically Belichick will win. But I think Sean McVay's on that path. And I think very highly of the guy. So giving him a quarterback that could make all the throws he wanted. Well, we saw in the very first play of Matthew Stafford's career, a bomb to Van Jefferson, which the Chicago Bears defended terribly. I'm expecting Matthew Stafford to potentially, and I know it's week one, and I know I might be overreacting, but if this trend happens to continue, we might see Matthew Stafford enter the MVP conversation. And honestly, it's about time. I'm really happy that he's in a situation that he could succeed as a secondary LA Rams fan. I'm excited to see the Rams ball out this season and finally return to a more offensive team as opposed to a team that 100% depended on their defense. But hey, you can't sleep on that defense either. A defense that is composed of Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, and Leonard Floyd. 
is a terrifying one at that. So I am actually picking the LA Rams to come out of the NFC West, but it's a crapshoot over there because you can't sleep on Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. You can never sleep on the San Francisco 49ers either. That entire division won their first game. They're all tied for first and last place, which brings us to our next winner. And that has to be Jameis Winston. I told my brother earlier this year, he was drafting his fantasy football team. He didn't know who to take for a quarterback. And I told him, listen, take a flyer on Jameis Winston. Something about Sean Payton and just his abilities with quarterbacks. I don't want to completely credit Sean Payton for Drew Brees' success, but I do think they complemented each other very well. I think Drew Brees elevated Sean Payton and Sean Payton elevated Drew Brees. I think he's come a long way in evolving as a head coach and has remarkable play design. And he consistently keeps up with NFL trends. And I just felt like he would be able to pass a little bit of that on to Jameis Winston. And if you look at what Jameis Winston went through over the past year, it's very similar to what Patrick Mahomes went through before he started, not to compare the two, but Jameis Winston had the luxury of being able to sit behind a Hall of Fame QB for a year, really seeing how Drew Brees prepares. Drew Brees seems like the type of individual that would actually go out of his way to make sure that the quarterback underneath him would actually get a good education and become well-versed as a QB. And boy, in his debut, going up against a team that, in my opinion, has a top two or top three cornerback in Jair Alexander, Jameis Winston threw for five touchdowns and no interceptions in his debut. You read that right. He didn't have a single interception in his debut. This is a man that is just 27 years old. He has plenty of football left in the tank, a former Heisman Trophy winner and a former number one overall pick. Gets placed in a situation where this the New Orleans Saints know how to play winning football. I was hyping up Jameis Winston all off season long. I thought he'd be an upgrade over Drew Brees. Not prime Drew Brees, but the Drew Brees that could only throw for 10 yards and could only throw out routes to Michael Thomas, which by the way, huge props to the way the New Orleans Saints handled the end of Drew Brees' career. I thought they did that with a lot of class and dignity. It's really nice to see Jameis turn his career around, but unfortunately for the loser in this case, Aaron Rodgers, I'm not really sure what's going to happen with him. Of course, it's just one week, but the fact that there's these rumors that Aaron Rodgers might leave after this season, that this is the Green Bay Packers' last day the fact that Devontae Adams will not sign a contract extension with the Green Bay Packers. The fact that there were all these distractions in the offseason. You just expected Aaron Rodgers to pull up and everything was going to be okay. But no, this is a man that literally only threw four interceptions in his first year with Matt LaFleur and five interceptions last year. The man didn't throw for a single touchdown and had two interceptions in his first game. He had a completion percentage of 53.6%. He was absolutely absolutely frozen and shell-shocked out there. Now, of course, the greats always figure out a way to get it done, but I would be lying to you if at least a part of me was curious as to how motivated Aaron Rodgers was this season. Maybe he happens to be over Green Bay. I don't really know. I can't really expand upon this because, again, it's just week one. But I'm not going to lie. This is something that I am not used to seeing from Aaron Rodgers, so that's kind of why I'm giving you the reaction I'm giving you. For all you know, this could just be something that we forget about within 10 to 12 weeks from now. But still, it's something that I'm going to keep an eye on and I'm sure you guys are going to as well. So let me know in the comment section down below if there are any other players that I missed. Originally, I wanted this to cover Monday Night Football, but well, this is a 17 minute long video. So aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.